Hello and welcome to Value Chain TV News Update. I am Adabio Gwijofo with the news. And on the news update, former governor of Kaduna State, Nasir El Rufai, has disclosed that the federal government is still paying for petroleum subsidy. El Rufai said this during an interaction with journalists in Meduguri, the Burnu State capital. The former governor noted that the federal government's expenditure on fuel subsidy has escalated beyond previous levels as the packages of support that would reduce the impact of fuel subsidy were not effective, hence reversal of the policy. The Nigerian Upstream Petroleum Regulatory Commission, NUPRC, has unveiled a template to ensure seamless domestic crude oil supply obligation, noting that the new guideline has created the option of paying for domestic crude in Naira. This was revealed at a press conference in Abuja by the Commission's Chief Executive, Engineer Benga Komolafe, who unveiled the new template. According to Komolafe, the areas which the templates deal with include legal framework, procedure for implementation of crude domestic oil supply obligations, procedures for crude oil requirements and allocation, payment instruments, currency of payment, logistics scheduling, continuous obligations, crude oil diversion and defaults. Komolafe added that the guidelines had become functional and covered all relevant areas of the operations in the sector. The Nigerian Upstream Petroleum Regulatory Commission, NUPRC, has said that Nigeria's crude oil reserves increased from about 36.96 billion barrels to 37.50 billion barrels within one year. This record was contained in the January 2023 to January 2024 updates given in Abuja by the NUPRC Chief Executive Officer Benga Komolafe. The statement noted that the natural gas reserves increased from 208.83 trillion cubic feet TCF to 209.26 TCF within the same period. Komolafe attributed the increase in the reserves to production from some of the marginal fields in the country and the several initiatives of the Commission. The transmission company of Nigeria, TCN, has announced the full restoration of the national grid, stating that the system collapse reported on Monday was due to a fire incident at the Afam power generating station. In a statement issued in Abuja by its spokesman, Ndidi Mba, TCN said the fire incident caused a partial disturbance of the nation's grid. Although the transmission company of Nigeria attributed the cause of the grid collapse to a fire incident, it had consistently blamed gas shortage for power generation and the vandalism of power infrastructure for the recurrent cases of grid collapse in Nigeria. It appears there is no end in sight to the rising price of food commodities in Nigeria, with the National Bureau of Statistics announcing an increase in food inflation to 40% in March 2024, compared to the rates recorded in March 2023 at 24.45%. Nigeria's food crisis has risen over the months, leading residents to loot trucks and warehouses. The increase in price of food is despite assurance given by President Bola Tinubu to tame the rising cost of goods. The Securities and Exchange Commission of Nigeria has announced the Virtual Capital Market Committee's meeting for the first quarter of 2024. Kabir Lawal completes the report. The meeting, which is scheduled for Thursday, April 18, will focus on addressing pressing challenges and brainstorming strategic ideas to advance the Nigerian capital market. This was disclosed by the Security and Exchange Commission, SEC, to journalists while emphasizing that the meeting will focus on critical issues affecting the market and ensure that those concerns were thoroughly addressed. The Commission added that market players will be given updates on significant accomplishments by various technical committees, including the Commodity Ecosystem Implementation Committee, e-dividend and direct cash settlement, financial literacy, and non-interest capital market financial literacy technical committee. For Valuchen TV, Kabir Lawal reporting.
The Federal Ministry of Housing and Urban Development has said that it will allocate about 8,925 houses to successful applicants through its national housing program. This was disclosed in a statement by the ministry's permanent secretary, Mr. Marcos Ogunbiyi, noting that the government said the allocation outlined a decisive leap in its pledge to provide accessible housing options to the populace. S.A. Ufoma has the details. Ogumbi explained that the allocation contains diverse housing schemes, constituting outright payment, mortgage, rent-to-own, and payment by installment, all tailored to suit the multifaceted needs of the applicants. And the applicants enrolled in the mortgage, rent-to-own, and installment payment schemes who are mandated to be subscribers to the National Housing Fund are currently being profiled. The Permanent Secretary expressed that successful applicants for outright payment Payment would be extended offers for new provisional allocations with federal controllers of housing and urban development in state and the chairman and chief executive officer of Nigerians in Diaspora Commission, initiating contact with subscribers as from April 18th for further coordination. He further explained that completed houses were unavailable in Abia, Lagos, Bayelsa, River State, and the Federal Capital Territory, FCT, and the allocation of housing units in the region would be conducted at the completion of housing projects later in the year. For Value Chain TV, S.A. Ufuma reporting. And that's it on the news update. I am Adalbi Ogwejofo. Thanks for staying with us.